What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny 2. Now in our video today, we return with This Week in Destiny, and this week we're looking ahead to the Solstice of Heroes, the introduction of the master version of the Vault of Glass, a new raid challenge, and also some awesome reprised weapons. So if you want to find out what's in store for the week ahead, be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a comment and rating down below, and remember to subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. But without further delay guys, let's jump into the video. Another week and another weekly reset is upon us and upon this week's weekly reset we see the start of the Solstice of Heroes event. This is a limited time event that celebrates the achievements of Guardians in the fourth year of Destiny 2 and the event will begin on the 6th of July and run through until the weekly reset on the 3rd of August. Now with Solstice of Heroes we see the return of the European Aerial Zone and the three player match made activity that will task players with navigating a floating island just outside the European dead zone. Now by defeating bosses you'll get to loot caches and these will provide solstice packages as well as solstice key fragments. And the more bosses you defeat, the more caches you'll earn. Now as you earn solstice key fragments you can use these to unlock additional solstice packages which will also earn you armor, weapons, materials, solstice gear and rerolls of the new solstice of hero shotgun, the compass rose. Now as well as this activity you'll need to complete objectives to upgrade your solstice armor set through three tiers and each tier unlocks new armor visuals and effects. Now the objectives for the first two solstice armor sets for each class can be completed during the event but players can still complete the final magnificent solstice set objectives after the conclusion of the event. Now as you complete your solstice armor objectives you'll also gain access to new armor accelerants from Ava Levante over in the tower. Now the armor accelerants will increase the progress made towards future armor sets for the duration of the event allowing sets to be completed faster for additional characters. Now with any new free event there will be many cosmetics that you can get from Tess over at Eververse. We'll be breaking down the entire Eververse store later in the video but if you can fully upgrade your armor sets for all three characters you'll earn yourself this awesome exotic ghost so if you want some of the best looking gear that you could earn this year be sure to jump into the solstice of heroes which launches on the 6th of july now as well as the solstice of hero event we see the launch and introduction of the master version of the vault of glass so beginning on tuesday the master version will become available for all players so when signing in the vault of glass will offer a master difficulty option to launch for you and your fire team and while there's no minimum power requirement all enemies will be at 1350 power so if you're finding yourself at 1340 or under you'll need to earn some pinnacle power to raise your artifact before attempting a run now the master vault of glass also unlocks the final trance required for the fate breaker seal and title now as well as earning a brand new title you can also get your hands on the new raid exotic ship and further still the master version of the vault of glass will also introduce time loss weapons to destiny 2. now time loss weapons are similar to adept weapons that you can find in grandmasters as well as trials over osiris but these weapons offer an additional perk in both the third and fourth column for even more customization now to get your hands on the time loss weapons you need to complete the vault of glass challenges in the master difficulty of the activity this is where you'll be rewarded and each week it will feature a specific time loss weapon for you to hunt rotating alongside the weekly challenge so once you've earned a time loss weapon though you can purchase additional rolls from the chest at the end of the raid using spores of conquest it's important to note that these time loss weapons are more expensive than their regular counterparts so be sure to stack up on those spores of conquest if you're looking for those god rolls now as for the raid challenge itself this is the strangers in time this week and this can be found over at the gatekeeper encounter now to complete this objective you need to kill the wyverns and Praetorians within five seconds of each other now the wyverns most definitely can pose quite a bit of trouble so stasis subclass are definitely going to be the top tier choice for this challenge now as well as solstice of heroes and the vault of glass we also see the return of some moon and dreaming city weapons so in the update launching on the 7th of july bungie will be reissuing the remaining moon and dreaming city weapons with new perks we made a video yesterday here on the channel of all the best sources and the easiest ways to farm those weapons so if you're looking to chase a brand new loud lullaby or the new god roll for the twilight oath be sure to check out that video and i'll leave the link to that down in the video description below so that's a good look at everything that's new this week now we're going to move on to the activities and then the seasonal challenges and the eververse inventory now the override activity will rotate around to the tangled shore this week so if you're still working on the path of the splicer quest be sure to head over there to get the next step of the quest underway now the nightfall will rotate around to the fallen saber this week 
and with that we see the Azum RR4 Adept Sniper Rifle become available. Now the Fallen Saber is one of the easier Grandmasters in the rotation and the Azum is a slept on sniper rifle and better still there's even double nightfall rewards throughout the entire week. So if you're looking for either the God Roll for the Azum or you're just looking to farm some end game upgrade materials, things like Ascendant Shards and Enhancement Prisms, be sure to jump into the Nightfall and take advantage of the double rewards. Now as for Crucible, the Crucible Rotator for the week will move over to Momentum Control. And with the changes to Trace Rifles, we should see less of those in Momentum Control this time around. But be sure to jump into either Momentum Control or Crucible if you're still working on those Valor rank objectives. Now as for the Lost Sectors, these are specific for Tuesday the 6th of July only and these will rotate on a daily basis. Now the 1310 Lost Sector can be found over on the Cosmodrome and this is the Exodus Garden 2A and this will be offering exotic chess pieces. So if you can complete this Lost Sector solo, you'll have a good chance in getting your hands on one of these new exotic pieces. Now as for the 1340 variant, you can find it this week over on the European Dead Zone. This will be located over in the excavation site and this will be offering exotic gauntlets. So once again, if you're missing out on those or you're just looking for a better role, be sure to solo the excavation site to get your chance. Now moving over onto Europa, now the Eclipse Zone will move over onto Eventide Ruins for the week. So once again, if you're still working on any augments, be sure to head over there to get those done. Now as for the Empire Hunt, this will rotate around to the Dark Priestess. And remember guys, if you can complete this on the 1340 difficulty, this will offer an additional piece of pinnacle gear. And much like the Empire Hunt, the Exo Challenge will also rotate around. This will be the survival this week, and once again, this is an easy source for pinnacle loot. Now with the activities all out the way, we can move on to the new seasonal challenges for week 9. There are only 5 weekly challenges this week, however we do see 6 brand new Solstice of Hero Triumphs added to Destiny 2. Now starting off with the seasonal challenges, we have Elemental Armaments. So with this we need to defeat targets with different types of elemental weapons with bonus progress being granted for defeating guardians and for defeating combatants in override and expunge and you'll need to defeat 200 enemies for each element. We also have Path of the Scribe and this is where we need to scan the Elixni Scribe recordings in the Elixni quarters over in the last city and there are 9 scannables in total. Alongside this we have the Elixni Ally 3 and this is where we need to increase the reputation with the Servitor Splicer over in the Helm and you need to level this up to level 30 to complete this objective. The penultimate seasonal challenge is called Armory Wide Calibration and this is where we need to use kinetic energy and power weapons with bonus progress granted for defeating champions and once again we need 200 final blows. And the final seasonal challenge is called Elemental Splicing and with this we need to complete strikes with each elemental subclass and in return for completing this you'll get your hands on some bright dust and the new Mantle of Duty shader. So that wraps up the seasonal challenges for week 9. Next we're going to look at the new 6 triumphs for the Solstice of Heroes. Now the first one is called Maximum Declination and this is where we need to obtain a legendary Solstice Armor piece. Next we have the Flash of Daylight and here we need to earn a piece of Solstice Armor by completing a challenge. From here we have the Partially Resplended and we need to acquire a glow for our Solstice Armor set for any class. And as well as completing this challenge we'll also get the Brightest Stars Emblem. From here we have the Cosmetically Resplended and here we need to acquire glow for all Solstice Armor sets for all classes. And if you're able to achieve this you'll get your hands on a sweet Solstice of Armor Exotic Ghost. And as you can see here it's a really good looking one and matches the aesthetic of the Solstice Armor sets. Next we have the Refractory Warrior and this is where we need to defeat bosses on Prism Day. Now each day the elemental affinity will change, rotating between Arc, Solar and Void. However on the fourth day this will be known as Prism Day and this is where it rotates through all the elements of the Solstice event. So on the Prism Day specifically this is where you'll need to defeat bosses over in the European Aerial Zone to get that objective completed. And the final one for the Solstice of Heroes is called the Solstice Cat Snacks. Now some of you may remember a cat from a previous Solstice event hidden underneath the European Aero Zone. For this year's event it has a use and by feeding that cat you'll get your hands on a retold tale as well as completing the final Solstice of Hero challenge. So that's a good look at everything that's in store for this week and to round us out we're going to look at Eververse and what it has for Bright Dust upon this week's weekly reset. Now once again massive thank you to Today in Destiny for providing this information. I'll leave the link to that site down in the video description below. Now remember guys, this is subject to change, so it could change as a result of the update on Tuesday the 6th of July. Now starting off on the main Bright Dust featured page, we have the Cabana Ghost Shell. This is an exotic ghost shell introduced on the last Solstice event, and if you want to add this to your collection, this will set you back 2,850 Bright Dust. 
Next up, we have the Silly Handshake. Once again, a reprised emote from a previous event. If you want to add this to your collection, this will set you back 1250 Bright Dust. This is followed up by the Shocking Entrance, a transmat effect introduced at a previous Solstice event as well. If you want to equip this, this will set you back 450 Bright Dust. And the final item on the featured page is actually classified. This is a brand new Solstice item which is hidden in the database, but as far as we can see this appears to be a shader as it will only cost 300 Bright Dust. So if you want a brand new shader, be sure to head over to Eververse and pick it up this week. In the main Bright Dust store though, we have the Catching Rays Exotic Emote. Once again, this is from a previous Solstice event. So if you'd like to catch those rays, you can do so for 3,250 Bright Dust. Next up, we have the Archipelago Pitch. This is an exotic ghost shell, once again from a previous Solstice event. If this ghost is your style, then you can part with 2,850 Bright Dust in order to pick it up. Next, we have the Era's Grace. This is one of the exotic sparrows once again from a previous solstice event. So if you found yourself a big fan of that cracked solstice themed armor from previous years, you can get a sparrow to match it and it will set you back 2,500 bright dust. This is followed by their Thunderwing, a legendary ship, which will set you back 500 Bright Dust if you want to add this to your collection. This brings us on to the Twisty Dance. Once again, an old emote from a previous Solstice event, which will set you back 700 Bright Dust if you want to add this to your emote wheel. The penultimate item on the offer is called the Raging Leapus. This is an exotic weapon ornament for the Jade Rapid Exotic Scout Rifle. So if Black and Red is very much your theme, you can pick this up for 1250 Bright Dust. And the final item on offer is the Beach Ball projection. This is a rare ghost projection and will set you back 500 bright dust. So there we have it guys, a good look at everything that's in store for this week in Destiny. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for further Destiny 2 content. I'm going to jump back into the game as always guys and I will catch you all again very soon.